Let's talk about buying land in the Black Hills. Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Christian Morrison. I'm a local real estate agent here in the Rapid City, Black Hills area. Uh, and I do this YouTube channel just for people looking at moving to the area um, to kind of answer all their questions, give them a good scope on what's happening here uh, and really help them out the transition and sometimes maybe talk them out of it on accident. <laughs> Who knows? It's possible. Um, but anyways, so today I'm going to talk about a question that I get a lot um, and I get it, oh my gosh, I forgot to say my my spiel, my sales spiel. Anyways, if you guys are looking at coming to the area, you got any questions, concerns, I want to talk about houses here, anything like that, feel free to give me a shout. Call me. Texting is best. You can email me as well. A lot of my replies, for some reason, an email have been going to people's spam, so watch out for that. That's why I say call and text is best because I don't want you guys to think I'm not responding to you. Um, anyways, if you got any questions of that, call me, text me. All my info is below. There, got that out of the way. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about land. I get this question a lot. I get people talking about, okay, hey, here's what we're looking for. We're looking for X amount of acres, let's say 10 acres. Um, we want to be out in the trees. Uh, we want to have you know hookups or availability to get water, all that kind of thing. And we want to be able to do whatever we want. We want to build a homestead. That's a really common thing. We want to get chickens. We want to get a donkey. We want to get llamas, whatever you want to get, right? Uh, we want to have a whole farm so we can be self-sustaining because uh, the world's crazy and we don't know what's going to happen, right? Which is totally understandable. Now, people are surprised a lot of times with how difficult this can be, um, and it's not as cheap as you might think it would be. So a couple things to consider, and I walk everybody through this. Almost all the property that you see online, okay? If you see properties that are big chunks of acreage, or even a little bit smaller, well, it's actually probably more common on the smaller stuff, let's say 10 acres or below, but it out, it's probably... It's decently common on the bigger stuff also, but let's just say 10 acres and below for now. Almost all of that stuff, guys, is going to have covenants, uh, covenants in it. Uh, and what covenants are, are basically restrictions on what you can do with the property based off of whoever developed the land in the beginning and sectioned it off because um, they didn't want certain things to happen on that land. They didn't want it to become junky. They didn't want mobile homes to go there, whatever those covenants are. And some are much more restrictive than others. Um, but for example, a lot of times they will say, these covenants or this area allows domestic animals like dogs or cats limited to four or five of them, let's say, um, and 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 that is it, and they can't be bred on the property. It's extremely common to have those kind of covenants. That's the most common, and then it'll go on to say no livestock, poultry, la 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 is allowed on the property. Now I know that may come as a surprise because it's South Dakota. You're like, why would they care there? But it's kind of the way it is on a lot of properties. Um, so you'll be surprised if you look at stuff um, and it has it has covenants because it will most of the time restrict that kind of thing. Now, a lot of times people are super shocked by the pricing on a lot of these lots. If you're going out and looking at something that's even two, three acres and it's in the trees in a beautiful landscape area, you could pay 200 grand for that lot, just the lot. And a lot of times it won't even have water to it yet. Yeah, you'll have to drill a well, which can be extremely expensive. You have to get a septic system in there, that type of thing. Now, I'm not to saying this to discourage you. It just depends on what you exactly want um, because a lot of stuff, it's, if it's very desirable to you, it's probably really desirable to a lot of people and everybody kind of has that idea right now of let's go build out in the, in the woods, get a homestead, we can get away from people, we can be self-sustaining if we want to be, right? Now, one thing that's pretty cool about a lot of the more rural areas here, especially if it's like a subdivision, uh, meaning like, there's some subdivisions that have like one and a half to three and a half acre lots that are out in the hills. Most of those have fiber to them. So you can get high speed internet and be out a little bit. Uh, but one thing people aren't ready for or don't like or whatever is a lot of times those subdivisions, um, well, it depends on which town you're in, but like if you're close to Rapid, there's a town in Piedmont, uh, just, just north of here that has lots on it. They have fiber to them. Uh, but the lots where they sit are in a valley a little bit, so you don't have trees on your property. And most people right now when I said that are like, ugh, I have to have trees, I have to have trees. And, and I get that too. I mean, you're coming to the Black Hills, you want to be in the hills, you want to be with the trees. Just keep in mind you're going to pay a premium for that. Like those lots I'm talking about without the trees, they have everything to them. They have gas, water, electric, internet, all the way to the lots. Uh, the one and a half acre lots are 50 grand. Uh, the three and a half acre lots are 70 grand. So contrast that with something that had trees in it, you're probably gonna pay double or triple for the same exact thing. Um, 
So yeah, sorry, I've just been going on basically a rant on this whole thing just because I want people to understand what they're gonna get into. And so if you're looking for property that you wanna build a homestead on, you gotta look for something that has no covenants. No covenants, so look for that wording. Um, it's a big selling point, so if you see a listing with that and you can reach out to me and I can help you find this kind of thing. But if you're looking for land with no covenants, you gotta make sure you see that no covenants in there or research it. It's actually from like, if I was just going to look a property somewhere else, it'd be kind of hard to find that, to be honest with you. It's hard to like, it's even hard for me to tell sometimes if they have no covenants. Uh, but you can definitely find it. I'm not discouraging you from saying you can't find it, but I'm just saying it's harder than it seems to find that and not all the land you look at allows that stuff. Almost assume the land you're looking at does not allow that kind of stuff. And then if it does, awesome. Um, but plan on it not, and you can send it to me or send it to, if you're working with another agent, whatever, send it to them, ask them, hey, does this have covenants or does it not? Um, uh, yeah, so that way you know what they are. And then if it does have covenants, ask them to send them to you or ask me to send them to you, I'll send you the covenants. Because sometimes, I mean, I was reading covenants the other day, and it said it allows up to 16 chickens, just no roosters. It allows um, two other farm animals, it said like horses or goats. So there's some covenants that allow some of that stuff or horses, you know, whatever. Uh, it just depends on where it is, what the covenants say. And, and a lot of times, guys, it's kind of good to have some covenants because if not, it can ruin the property value for you. If your neighbor has a, you know, $5,000 mobile home and your house is worth $800,000. So you know what I mean? It can, it can skew the value of the area. So you do want some covenants because you don't want stuff to be junky. Um, now, really quickly, I want to touch on, I mentioned before, the water that kind of stuff. One thing you wanna look for too is you wanna make sure electric is at least a decent uh, decent shot by so you can get that uh, electric to the property. And you just wanna figure out if it doesn't have water to it, what are the well depths to get it there or are you close enough to city water that you can get city water there for cheaper. Um, and then obviously you just wanna see if you have to get a, a mound system for your septic because that'd be a little bit more than an average septic. All those type of things um, you'd wanna check out before moving forward on it. And again, I can help you with all this stuff if you want to chat with me about it, if you want to look at it. But, you know, prices on land, guys, can really vary. It's obviously going to be much, much cheaper to buy land uh, if it doesn't have a bunch of trees. It's not in the hills. And if you're in the hills with a bunch of trees, it's going to be double to triple the price. It's just kind of how it is right now. Um, so, again, guys, I hope this was helpful a little bit. Uh, hopefully it answered some questions that some of you have uh, on the land side of things and what it's like. So feel free to give me a call, shoot me a text if you got any questions. Uh, and also drop a comment on what else I should do for videos in the future. Uh, and I got another couple of videos coming out this week. So thanks for guys for what a little messed up there. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. See you on the next one.